So in this video, I want to talk about motivation and I got inspired to record this video when I was talking to one of my clients who's a PhD student on our regular weekly um, group coaching sessions that we host as part of uh, my program, PhD Accelerator. And you know, what she said, I think is true of a lot of other PhD students and researchers. And she was basically lacking the motivation to, you know, to continue working and day in, day out, continue writing, you know, and writing a thesis, writing research papers regularly is very difficult and it's difficult to maintain that motivation. But really, you know, success in life, be it in research or in any other area is not really about motivation. It's about something else. And in this video, I want to give you that little secret to success so that you can write an excellent PhD thesis or research papers. Now, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowiak and I run Academic English Now, where I help university students and researchers write regularly research papers for high impact journals. So motivation is kind of this buzzword that a lot of people talk about, you know, um, how to gain motivation, how to maintain motivation. People talk about lacking motivation to pursue the goals, right? Whereas some people talk about being super motivated to do something, right? The problem with motivation though is that it's this elusive thing that like once it's there, it's amazing, right? Because you just want to continue doing stuff. And once it's gone, it's, it's very difficult to find back, you know? And the problem with relying on motivation is precisely this, that it's very elusive. It tends to kind of come and go. And if you're relying on motivation to do your work, well, it's gonna, your work is gonna look like this. You know, so you're going to have those hypes when you're motivated for whatever reason and you're feeling like doing a lot of work. And then you're going to go all the way down because your motivation disappears for whatever reason and you're not going to be doing any work. And then you're going to be on a hype again and then it's going to be a roller coaster. And like this, you can't really achieve anything in life, be it, you know, finish your PhD, regularly write research papers, get tenure, whatever, whatever it is that you want to achieve, right? And the, the real secret to success is not motivation at all, it's self-discipline, right? Why self-discipline? Well, because most big goals in life, they take years to achieve, right? And they take years of hard work, day in, day out. Whether you're motivated or not, whether you're feeling like it, whether it's, you know, Christmas day, your birthday, or just your regular Monday, you, you do what you have to do in order to achieve your goal. And to be able to do that, what it takes is self-discipline. It's not motivation because you're going to have motivation on some days and no motivation on other days. And research as well, interestingly, clearly shows that um, self-discipline is a better, significantly better predictor of academic success than intelligence, for example, right? So what, what you need to basically do is to, is to cultivate in yourself the habit of self-discipline and the habit of persistence, right? To give you a, a very practical example, you know, with, for example, writing research papers myself. It's not, it's not that I, every time that I sit down to write the paper, I feel incredibly motivated to do so. I, I don't, right? There are there is a million other things that I could be doing. I could finish watching Peaky Blinders on Netflix, which is an amazing series, right? I could read a book, I could see my friends, right? Or I could do something that's much easier to do, right? Like for example, record this YouTube video, which is much easier than writing a research paper. But you know, I force myself to stay disciplined and just do it, right? So success in any area of life is is just about discipline and maintaining that discipline over long periods of time right now the question of course is how do you actually do that and how do you maintain self-discipline 
But there's lots of different ways of doing it. But one really important way is to, first of all, understand why you are not disciplined and you're not doing the work. Well, the main reason is that you, your brain you know, loves distractions and loves the dopamine that comes with distractions. There's this thing called the novelty bias, right? So that's why your brain doesn't want to do the hard work. It wants to do the easy work and get instant gratification. That's why you're scrolling through YouTube and maybe watching this video because your brain wants instant gratification. Whereas writing a research paper doesn't give instant gratification. It's, you know, it's delayed gratification. So understanding that can help you to, you know, to, to try and develop techniques or strategies to, to combat it and to be more self-disciplined. So if your brain, you know, loves distractions and the dopamine that comes with them, what we need to do is to get rid of those distractions, right? It is much easier to be self-disciplined if the temptations to break the discipline just aren't there, right? What do I mean by that? Well, for example, if you struggle to write research papers, right, and to motivate yourself to write and to, you know, to stay disciplined, what you, what you need to do is identify what is distracting you. What, what are the things that you do instead of writing papers? Well, maybe instead of writing papers, you go on YouTube and you watch videos about how to write research papers, right? Which, you know, in a way might help you, but they, they are really distractions because you want to avoid the pain of being disciplined. So what you need to do is to eliminate that distraction because fighting distractions is counterproductive. It's really tiring. It takes so much effort and it's almost impossible to control in the long run. So the best thing to do is just to get rid of that distraction. So, you know, if it's, for example, YouTube, well, delete the app from your phone, right? You just get rid of it or hide your phone somewhere right and remove any distractions from your from your desktop so that you know the only thing that you can do is is to actually be disciplined right and it works for all sorts of different things like if you're if you find yourself like snacking on like unhealthy things and crisps well just eliminate those right that's how you kind of become self-disciplined is about eliminating those other things Another really good way to to cultivate self-discipline as well is to make the default is to make the desired action the default action. What, what do I mean by that? Well, if if you want if you want to do something, right? like for example write a research paper but you know that you struggle and every single morning when you switch on your computer rather than write the research paper you check your email because that's easier it gives you instant gratification well what you should do apart from removing those temptations which i've just mentioned is to make writing papers the default action this can be achieved through for example leaving your computer on sleep with the word document open so that when you press the power button and your computer switches on again what you see is your is your paper that you have to write so it's much easier to then do it and it's much more difficult to ignore doing it right now another thing that you need to do to cultivate self-discipline is to embrace discomfort and embrace pain because really you know most things that overall in the long run are good for us like writing papers exercising every day are painful <laughs> very painful right um, and in the long run they're, they're really good but when you're doing them initially they're not that fun and they're a little bit painful right so you need to embrace that pain you know and just accept it you know and you know feel it and don't ignore it feel it embrace it accept it and get over it you know step by step every single day try to get over that um, un feeling of unease and and discomfort and then you know sooner or later it will just disappear if you continue doing it every day it will just disappear completely and you'll be fine with it right 
Now, the last way in which you know you can cultivate self-discipline is to surround yourself with the right environment and the right people. So I talked a little bit about the right environment in my other video when I showed you my work uh, work desk setup basically you know and you want to have the environment where that is uncluttered where doing the default action is you know is when doing the best action is the default action you want an environment that doesn't promote distractions or temptations but you want an environment that promotes the actions that you want to take right and people are incredibly important to illustrate how important people are and surroundings are, you know, there is one study that shows that people who have obese friends are, I think it was 170% more likely to end up being obese themselves. That's the influence, the power of people around you. And the influence of environment uh, in a similar study, again, about obesity, you know, just reducing the size of the plate significantly helped people to stay on a diet, right? So the only thing they did was reduce the, the, the size of the plate of the people and people started eating less, right? Without even knowing it. That's the power of like your surroundings. So you want to surround yourself with the right people that help you to get to your goals, right? And, you know, a great way to do that is to find an accountability partner, find a group of people that are moving in the same direction, right? And if you want to do that in a, in a really powerful and, and uh, you know, proven way, then I'll definitely encourage you to check out my own mastermind, Research Paper Mastery and PhD Accelerator, where, you know, it's filled with people like yourself who are going towards the same goal, you know, wanting to publish research papers regularly and being surrounded by people like that can, you know, really, really significantly boost your chances of achieving those goals. And if you couple that with, you know, step-by-step -step instructions on what to do and sort of regular support and guidance from those other people, but also from, you know, from, from a coach, then your chances of success increase exponentially, right? So if these are the sort of results that you would want to get and you'd really want to develop self-discipline so that you can achieve your long-term research goals, then definitely schedule a, a free one-to-one -one strategy session and we'll discuss you know, the problems that you're currently having, what you want to achieve to see how and if you know, we're able to help you. And the link to schedule that should be somewhere below this video.